Welcome back to World of Immersion. Today we have a brand new video for you, and that is we're going to be ranking the top 10 roller coasters in the state of California. Now, just yesterday we had a video posted that was the top 10 theme parks in the state of California, and similarly, we have now been on almost every single major roller coaster in the entire state. So now I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of the coasters, and I am here to rank the top 10 of them. But before we start today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss it when we have brand new videos from all of your favorite Southern California theme parks, as well as other theme parks across the country. With that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, starting off in number 10, we have Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. Now, Manta is one of those roller coasters that we rode pretty recently, and in general, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. I had pretty low expectations going in because it was a family coaster, you know, but honestly, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. It is a really, really fun ride. It's got some fantastic launches. It doesn't have any really standout elements besides maybe the first and second launch, but it's just a really fun ride. It's really, really smooth. It's got fantastic restraints. It's got pretty decent theming and landscaping. And the pre-launch section is also really fun where it rocks you back and forth with some really cool music. It's just overall a really fun ride and I would strongly suggest riding it if you're over at SeaWorld San Diego. It is by far my favorite coaster at that park, even though it's a family coaster. But coming in at number nine is a ride that is currently closed and has been for the last few months. And that is Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. While this ride is closed, we're still going to be ranking it on the list because it will potentially reopen in the future at some point. And this ride is so much fun. It has one of the most forceful launches on any coaster I've ever experienced ever. It's 0 to 82 in like 1.8 seconds. It is crazy fast. And you have just a small little T-bar restraint holding you in, which is crazy for how fast and tall this roller coaster is. Think of it as a mini top throttle dragster, except this ride's very different because it has some extra elements after the top hat. Those overbank curves can be really fun, and in general, it's a longer ride than top throttle dragster. However, do be warned that this line takes a long time. They take forever to send out each train, so definitely if it is open when you're going to Knott's Berry Farm, be sure to hit it up first as one of your first rides because it can get a crazy long line, but it is so worth it. This ride is really, really fun, and I would strongly suggest a front row ride if you can. Coming in at number 8, we're going all the way up to Northern California to Six Flags Discovery Kingdom where we have my favorite roller coaster at that park, the Joker. This mini RMC is a ton of fun. While it's not my favorite RMC coaster I've been on, in fact it is towards the bottom of them, it's still an RMC and it's still incredible. It has not the strongest airtime, but has some really fun inversions and that first drop is just great. I think this ride is pretty underrated in general. I feel like people hate on it way too much. It is one of the weaker RMCs, but like I said, it's still an RMC, it still packs a punch, and it is still by far the best ride in the entire park. So I would strongly suggest making a trip up to Northern California so you can ride Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. It's for sure the highlight of that trip. But coming in at number seven is another roller coaster in Northern California, and that is going to be Gold Striker, the GCI wooden coaster over at California's Great America. This is one of the most intense wooden coasters I have been on. It has some really strong airtime, and just in general, like I said, one of the most intense coasters ever. Recently, however, it's gotten a little bit rough, which really does suck because it does take away from the ride a little bit. However, it's still just such a fun ride. I would recommend a front row ride on this one as well because it's going to be a little bit less rough and you're still going to get a lot of those pops of airtime and those overbank curves are really, really fun. It's a pretty long ride as well and it's right there in the front of the park so I would definitely suggest doing it first thing when you are there at California's Great America. But like I said, it is a fantastic ride and I would strongly recommend doing it if you are up in the area before it closes because unfortunately California's Great America will be closing at some point soon in the future and wooden coasters are pretty hard to relocate, so I'm not sure if Gold Striker will be ever reopened again. So be sure to ride it before it closes. And staying in Northern California, and even staying at the same park, we have my favorite roller coaster in the entirety of Northern California, and that is Railblazer at California's Great America. This ride is so insane. It is one of the most intense and just crazy roller coasters I have been on. It's such a small coaster and so compact, but it flies through that layout faster than any other coaster I've been on. It feels so insanely fast. And while it isn't really that fast, and it's not really that tall, it just feels so fast, and it is so whippy. 
I would definitely recommend a back row ride on this thing. And for some reason, unlike any of the other Raptors, Railblazer has not gotten very rough. It still runs relatively smooth. And like I said, sitting in the back row is just crazy, especially over that vertical first drop and just through those crazy airtime moments. It is just such a fun ride. And I would strongly suggest checking out the original Raptor up in Northern California if you can. All right, we've made it to the top half of our list. And in fifth place, we have Railblazer's older sister, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage over at Six Flags Magic Mountain, the newest coaster on this list. Now, I prefer this ride to Railblazer just a little bit. It is a lot longer of a ride and it's much taller and faster. And because of how much longer the train is, that first drop, if you sit in the back row, is insane. Unfortunately though, Wonder Woman is not even that old and it's already got a little bit of a rattle, which does suck. Hopefully it doesn't get too much worse because it does it does hinder the ride a little bit. But like I said, it's not that bad. It is still an incredible roller coaster. And luckily, it doesn't really hurt the ride that much. Like I said, it's a much longer ride than Railblazer, which is why I put it above Railblazer. And some of the airtime moments can be a little bit stronger. While Railblazer may be more intense, I think Wonder Woman is just a much more fun ride overall. And because of the longer train and the continuously moving station, the line just moves a lot quicker. And just in general, it's a more pleasant experience, in my opinion, than Railblazer. But like I said, both of them are incredible rides. And I would strongly suggest checking out both of them if you can. So you can choose between the two of them which one you think is better. All right, but staying in the same park, we have another coaster. And that is going to be Tatsu, the massive B&M flying coaster. This ride is so incredible. It is crazy how tall and fast this ride is. It is a really graceful ride, and then that pretzel loop might be the most intense moment I have experienced on any coaster ever. It is just so insane. It is a ton of fun. I love Tatsu so much, and I would strongly suggest checking it out if you can because it is seriously unlike any other flying coaster out there. While there are some flying coasters that people might think are better, Tatsu is just unlike any of the other ones because Tatsu is on top of a mountain and you're just so high up off the ground. And like I said, that pretzel loop is so insanely intense. It is crazy. All right, but now we are in the top three. And spoiler alert, all three of these are in my top five roller coasters of all time. So be sure to check out that video where we rank my top 25 roller coasters of all time if you haven't already. But coming in at number three in third place, we have X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is the definition of insanity. This ride is so crazy. Just sitting on the side of the track, you as you're going up the lift, not being able to see when you're about to hit the top, and then as you crest over the top, flipping so you are face down, going down a vertical drop that is over 200 feet, is just crazy. While it's not the longest ride in the world, and it is pretty decently rough, it really doesn't hinder the ride experience that much, and you can look past that and see what an insane ride it is, and just how crazy it is that this ride even exists. I love this ride so much, and while it may not be for everybody, if you do like crazy intense roller coasters that are just completely out of control, I would definitely recommend doing X2. But coming in in second place, we have my favorite wooden roller coaster of all time, and that is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. I am such a huge fan of this ride. I seriously think it is one of the most perfect roller coasters ever built. It is such an incredibly long coaster. It is so insanely smooth for a wooden coaster as well. That first drop is really fun. And by far my favorite moment is that drop off the mid course or what used to be the mid course that actually took away the mid course, which means it flies even faster through that second half. But like I said, that drop off the mid course is insane, especially if you're in the back row. And doing a back row night ride on this thing is unlike any other coaster experience out there. It is pitch black. It is just so insane. And like I said, it is a crazy long ride. Ghost Rider is one of my favorite roller coasters of all time. However, it is not my favorite in the state. And that title goes to Twisted Colossus over at Six Flags Magic Mountain. It is actually the coaster I have been on more than any other coaster on this planet. And I love this ride to death. I think Twisted Colossus is such a perfect roller coaster, especially when it duels. It is just so much better. It seriously is one of the best roller coasters ever built. It is in my top three roller coasters of all time. I love Twisted Colossus. It is so insanely smooth, even though it's almost eight years old. And like I said, when you get a racing ride, it is just so much better. It is such a long ride as well because you go on both sides of the track. And it's some fantastic airtime moments. I can't say enough about how much I love Twisted Colossus. However, that is going to do it for my ranking of the top 10 roller coasters in the state of California. I want you to comment down below how you would rank your top 10 roller coasters in the entire state. Or if you've never been to California, what roller coasters you would like to ride in the state. 
Thank you so much for watching our video today, but before you go, be sure to check out that video where we ranked my top 25 roller coasters of all time at the end of 2022. Thanks for watching World of Immersion, and we'll catch you in the next video.